131, so I laid out the steps for solving a radical equation. All right, so to solve an equation containing radicals, follow these steps. Isolate the radical on one side of the equation. Raise each side of the equation to a power that is the same as the index of the radical so that the radical is eliminated. If the equation still contains a radical, repeat steps one and two. Solve the resulting equation and check each proposed solution in the original equation. So let me just talk a little bit more about each of these and refer you back to example three when we practice these. So isolate the radical on one side of the equation. If you remember from example three, we did that, right? We had this square root of four x plus 12 on the left side of the equation, so we moved it over, so it was all by itself. We isolated it. And step two sounds the most convoluted, but we, we did it in example three, right? Raise each side of the equation to a power that is the same as the index of the radical. All right, so after we isolated that radical in example three, what did we do to both sides of the equation? We squared them. Now, why do we square it? Well, that's because the index of this radical, when we don't write a number here, it's implied to be a two. So this was a square root. So we squared both sides because square rooting and squaring cancel each other out, right? They're inverse operations of one another. So that's how we picked squaring both sides, right? And we eliminated that radical. We solved the resulting equation. It wound up being quadratic, so I, I happened to factor. And then we have to remember to check each proposed solution in the original equation. Because as we saw in example three, we got an extraneous solution, right? We got two answers by solving that quadratic equation, but only one of them worked in our original equation. All right, now we're gonna go through example four. And I want you to take note that there are two radicals in here. So, so this, this equation is going to be significantly trickier to solve because we're going to do steps one and two and we're gonna find out we still have a radical in our equation and then we're gonna to have to repeat steps one and two before we move on to three and four. So since I have two radicals here, I'm gonna to have to isolate a radical twice, all right? Because when I go to isolate these radicals, at least for step one, I can only do one at a time. So that's why I've gotta repeat this process twice and it's just that much more complicated the more radicals you have. You can imagine if I had an equation with five radicals, it would take forever to do. I, I could still do it, but it would take a while. Fear not, we're only gonna do two radicals at a time, but let, let's try this. Now I can opt to solve, or I should say isolate, either of these radicals. I, I've mentioned before, I like when we have positive coefficients, so I'm just gonna move the square root of x plus four to the right side of the equation. So I'm gonna have the square root of three x plus one being equal to one plus the square root of x plus four. So while I wasn't able to isolate the square root of x plus four, I was able to isolate the square root of three x plus one. So I did isolate a radical on one side of the equation. And now I'm gonna raise each equation, or each side of the equation, excuse me, to a power that is the same as the index of the radical. So again, I have a square root here. There's an unsaid two, so I'm going to square both sides. All right. Now. Once I do all of the shenanigans, it's gonna be a lot. I'm still gonna have a radical in my equation, so I will wind up repeating steps one and two. But because this is gonna take so much room, I'm gonna scooch this up, and we're gonna lose sight of the steps that we have. All right, so let me move that up so that we can see a bunch of blank space where we can work. All right, that's looking pretty good. All right, so let's see what we have here. Square rooting and squaring, again, inverse operations of one another. So I'm just gonna get a three x plus one here. Be careful, do not distribute the exponent over that binomial. You can't distribute powers or exponents over addition and subtraction. I've got to FOIL or double distribute this. All right. So I'm actually going to FOIL this. I know in the past I've done double distribution, but for today, I'm feeling lucky, we're just gonna FOIL. So if we take a look at this, first is one times one, which is one. Outer is one times the square root of x plus four, which is the square root of x plus four. Inner is the square root of x plus four times one, which is the square root of x plus four. And last is the square root of x plus four times the square root of x plus four. Now, when you have a radical, times itself, right? Let me just write off to the side here. I have the square root of x plus four squared. We've talked about square roots and squares undo each other. 
So this just becomes x plus 4. Okay, I'm going to erase this because I'm pretty sure I'm going to need all the space I have to solve this problem. Okay, with all of this, I, I think you'll see that these are like terms. So let me go ahead and combine these. I'm also going to combine the 1 and the 4. Those are like terms. And then these two radicals are like terms. So I have 3x plus 1 will be equal to, all right, 1 plus 4 is 5. I have an x here. And I have two square roots of x plus 4. And yes, this looks ugly. I'm not denying that. But take note, I started with two radicals. And do you see I only have one radical now, right? So I've simplified this a bit. Even though it's still ugly, I, I got rid of a radical. So my goal now is to repeat steps one and two. I want to isolate this radical. All right, so if I want to isolate this radical, I want to move the five over, I want to move the x over, and I want to divide by two. So let's try that. I'm going to subtract five from both sides and x. And let's see what we're getting. All right, three x minus x, two x. Ooh, I think I'm going to sneeze. Hold up. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. 1 minus 5, we got negative 4. On the right side of the equation, I have 2 times the square root of x plus 4. Okay, so I'm looking good. Now, for me personally, I like when my um, radical is on the left side of the equation, so I'm going to write it on the left side of the equation. So I have 2 square roots of x plus 4 equaling 2x minus 4. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Okay, and I'm going to scooch this paper down. Like I said, this is going to take a little while, so let me keep scooching this so we can get as much space as I can. All right, now I've got some, some bunny ears, some alien ears here. The twos will cancel here, but this is going to leave me with x minus two. So I have the square root of x plus four equaling x minus two. I have isolated my radical. Now I'm going to raise each side of the equation to a power that is the same as the index of my radical. And the index of my radical, again, it's a two. So I'm going to square both sides. All right, when I square both sides, I'm gonna move this over here so we can see it. Square rooting and squaring go away. And again, I cannot distribute this power or this exponent over that binomial. I need to FOIL. So this is x minus two times x minus two. And just for the sake of reviewing double distribution, let's do it. So I would have x plus 4, that would be equal to x times x minus 2, minus 2 times x minus 2. And again, you could FOIL it. I'm just trying to change it up. So we've got x plus 4, x squared, minus 2x, minus 2x plus 4. So I'm looking at x plus 4 being equal to x squared minus 4x plus 4. All right, I've got a quadratic equation. I'm going to try and factor it. I hope it works. Let's see, I will subtract, I'll move these over. So I will subtract four and I will subtract x. All right, and that's gonna leave me with zero on this side and x squared minus five x over here. Now again, if you want, you can use the quadratic formula. I'm still gonna factor. I'm gonna rewrite this. I like my variables on the left side. So let me just rewrite it that way. I'm gonna factor out the GCF of x. I'm gonna get left with x and x minus five. All right, and then I have the zero product property. So either x is equal to zero or x minus five is equal to zero. So I'm looking at x equaling zero and five, okay? Now with that, I'm gonna scooch this back down because I do have a little bit of space. I wanna show you step four, all right? We really need to remember to check each proposed solution, of which I have two, into the original equation. All right, so I'm gonna scooch my paper back down. I'm gonna rewrite this original equation just so we have it in the view screen with us, and we're going to check out zero and five. And we're going to see, do they both make it? Do one make it? Do neither make it? And my guess is that one of these make it. So let me move this down, all right, so that we have some room to check all of this out. So let's see, here we go. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna try this. Here is my original equation. We have the square root of three x plus one minus the square root of x plus four is equal to one. All right, and we're going to check that along x equaling zero and x equaling five. So let's, let's try this, let's check 
x equals 0. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to have the square root of 3 times 0 plus 1 minus the square root of 0 plus 4, and is that equal to 1? And again, for me personally, I like to just put a question mark over it, as in I'm, I'm not sure if it's equal just yet, so, so let's find out. All right, so 3 times 0 is 0, and this is going to be the square root of 1. 0 plus 4 is 4. This is square root of 4. Is that equal to 1? Well, that's 1 minus 2. Is that equal to 1? No, it's not. Negative 1 does not equal 1. So x equals 0 is going to be given the boot. I don't want that solution in there. All right, let's check x equaling 5. All right, so is the square root of 3 times 5 plus 1 minus the square root of 5 plus 4, is that equal to 1? All right, so 3 times 5 is 15, 15 plus 1 is 16, square root of 16 minus, all right, 5 plus 4 9. All right, is that equal to 1? Is 4 minus 3 equal to 1? Yes, it is. 1 is equal to 1. So my only solution coming out of all of this is the number x equals 5, right? It's a lot of work to do, but we do get our one answer, x equals 5. All right, so there's how we solve absolute value, excuse me, not absolute value, that's the next thing. There's how we solve radical equations. When we get to the next page, we're going to take our first look at absolute value equations. All right, I'll see you in a few. Bye.